Hey folks, my name is Jason Harmon for your Tennessee's Wildcast. And we're out here at the Hiawassee Refuge in Birchwood, Tennessee, Meigs County, at the Cherokee Sandhill Crane Viewing Days. Uh, there's a lot of events going on. We have a cabin back here set up that's got a, a lot of different uh, event tables and some stuff you can look at, some, some animals from Tennessee's wildlife. Uh, we got a lot of people back here viewing the birds. We got a lot of sandhill cranes out today. Even some whoopers have showed up. Uh, whooping cranes and uh, ducks and all kinds of different wildlife out here to see. But uh, stay with us and uh, we're going to interview some people and uh, check out all the stuff going on back here. So stay with us. Hey folks, we're here with Tom Scott. He's the event coordinator for the Tennessee Wildlife Federation, a former president. And he's going to tell us a little bit about the event today and uh, get his thoughts on the on the whole deal. Well, we've been a happy big part of this event for now four years. And this is just a great outdoor event for Tennessee. It's the number one wildlife watching event in the state. So we're happy to be a part of working with the agency on it hand in hand and think it's a real good thing for the public to get out and look at. And how many years has this been going on so far? I think this is the 16th year it has grown from basically a very small event into something very large. I think the biggest crowds on good weather day is up to 10,000 people over the weekend. Uh, you know, when you get cold weather and inclement weather like we get today, it does have a tendency to put a damper on the crowds. But the birds are here and Mother Nature's still here, so we're happy about that. Well, folks, it's pretty cold out here, but we're gonna stick around and go check out some of the birds. Uh, I know they've seen a lot of different kinds over here at the viewing, viewing area, and uh, We'll be right back with you in a minute. The Tennessee Aquarium seeks to inspire a sense of wonder and appreciation in the natural world. This is one of my favorite illustrations. Is there anything more beautiful than a toad? They call that the, they call it the blue jeans frog because it's red on top but it's got bright blue legs. It's one of the groups of animals that are very much impacted in this world. Their numbers are dropping dramatically all throughout the world uh, for various reasons. Uh, principally, amphibians are very sensitive to changes in the environment. Kind of looks like Jabba the Hutt. If you're into Star Wars, then. So we look fuzzy green like Oscar the Grouch. And 70% of the species that we need to be thinking about depend on those forests. If you do a graph, the correlation between the sale of charcoal and Bermuda shorts is extremely high. It's almost a one-to-one -one relationship. But charcoal has nothing to do with Bermuda shorts, and Bermuda shorts has nothing to do with charcoal. And the reason is, is because the weather's getting warmer and it's turning summertime. We're with the Tennessee Ornithological Society. We're with the local chapter. And then there's a state organization. It's a conservation organization. And uh, what we do is uh, we just have a lot of people that are willing to bring out their, their uh, telescopes and binoculars and just share with people that uh, a lot of people want to know what it is that they're seeing. Well, what we've got is, is uh, a bunch of sandhill cranes that have come into the area. They come every year and they leave from up around Wisconsin and in years past they would go all the way down to Florida but uh, the TWRA has uh, a lot of corn that's really planted for the geese and uh, the cranes have taken advantage of that and we like to say that it's kind of like uh, finding a rest area that's got all the food you want and a real nice place to stay so they, they've quit going all the way down to Florida. I understand from the TWRA representatives that there's probably 17 or 18,000 cranes. You wouldn't know it to look out here. You don't see that many. But they're spread out over an area. If you know where 10 Mile is, they, they're going as far west as 10 Mile. And then they're spread out at all kinds of different places. And it used to be when there was uh, corn out here, they would come out here and eat the corn and would roost here at night. When they roost, they like to have a place where uh, they have a little water over their feet and they have a chance of hearing predators come up from behind them as part of the deal. But there's quite a few cranes out here now. Now, I was talking to one of the TWRA fellows, I was talking to Swing, and uh, we were laughing that we've got all these, these bird book names for it, and he's got all the hunter names. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll tease me about water turkeys and stuff. 
instead of cormorants, you know. <laughs> that was that was kind of fun. I don't really know those. I don't hunt, but but it's uh, it's it's kind of neat. And TWRA does a real good job of trying to provide for for people who are interested in non-game wildlife. And so we appreciate that very much. It's a good good relationship. How many people have seen some cranes today? You may seen any cranes? I do want to put in a good word for these these nice folks that have been sitting out here all day long in the cold with these scopes so that folks can see those cranes. A lot of the people that you've seen out there are members of the Tennessee Ornithological Society. The reason Sandhill cranes are making their comeback is because the contribution that waterfowl hunters have made to allow the rest areas to be developed to begin with. This refuge was not purchased with federal dollars as much as it was purchased with local sportsman's dollars from Tennessee. So a combination of those things from, from waterfowl hunters help provide what you're seeing today.